Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to talk about principal component analysis, which is a very popular dimensionality reduction technique. We'll talk about what it is and why people do it, like what's the motivation. We'll talk about the mathematical aspect of PCA and we'll start diving into the mathematical definitions, although up to a certain extent. I will try to make another video in the future where I elaborate more on this subject. And at the end, we'll talk about PCA through a Python example. Let's start with the what and why. So let's look at one type of example, one possible example. Suppose we have a data set. And this data set has a table with several rows. And in this example, let's say that each row represents a different patient, a different sample, and each column represents a different feature. So a feature could be, say, a medical test. We have the first medical test, the second medical test, and so on. And it could pose a problem because we could have two many features, too many samples. So after dimensionality reduction, what would happen is for the same amount of samples for the same patients, we would have a smaller number of, dimension, uh, of dimensions representing the same data. And there are several reasons of why someone would want to perform this dimensionality reduction. Uh, one possible reason would be to simplify the data, and uh, it would also be much easier to visualize the data. Another reason would be to reduce overfitting, because if the data has too many dimensions, uh, the model, the machine learning application could easily overfit on the data. There's actually a term for that, it's called a, the curse of dimensionality. Another reason is that it's much easier to compute things when you have a small number of features. It's, uh, it's, mu it's much easier to handle your, your model that way. It's also, uh, depending on the way you reduce the number of features, but it's also a great way to reduce noisy features or noise at all on your data set. And it's also a great form to compress the data. Say you have an image and you want to compress it and save it in storage somewhere, then this would also be uh, a possible solution. And another reason is something called multicollinearity. This happens when your data set has many features and some of them are highly correlated meaning they represent almost the exact data and one feature over another, they really don't help you. They kind of repeat themselves. So again, performing dimensionality reduction helps you uh, avoid this kind of uh, features. And of course, I guess it goes without saying that uh, these reasons can coexist one with another. And it's also possible that there are other reasons that I would I haven't mentioned here because uh, these are just I guess the, the the top ones I could think of. So, in dimensionality reduction, we start off with a large number of features and then we reduce them just like we said. And if we want to know how to do that, well, that's where PCA comes into place because. There are several ways. I mean, I guess the simplest case would be let's choose the first two features and they would be the, well, the, the new features. But maybe these features are not very representative of the data. So PCA is a closed form solution. It's, it's uh, you know, we could think of it as a formula. Of course, we'd have to understand how it happens, but it's a, form of kind of merging your features together while preserving the maximum amount of information. And another way to say information for our specific case would be variance. 
And this is the exact definition of PCA, reducing the number of features while uh, preserving the uh, maximum amount of variance. Let's understand what the well, term variance means. Here we have the formula for variance where it's defined for a given uh, variable or in our case feature. So uh, the formula says that for each one of the values in the features, xi, uh, we reduce the mean of that feature, the mean of the column in the um, data set that we saw earlier, and we square that and sum everything together. And at the end, we divide by n minus 1. This is the formula for variance. And over here at the bottom, we have two different examples. The left example for the two variables uh, or two features, x and y, we have low variance and we can see their behavior. They're kind of centered around the middle. And, and the, at the right, we have, well, two features, x and y, which uh, have high variance. I mean, if we, plug the val if we would plug the values into the formula above, we would get higher values on the right than we would on the left. Uh, I guess x here is kind of confusing because it, uh, it's also at the axis as a feature and also over here. But uh, just to kind of clarify what we mean over here by variance is the variance of the feature. In this example, if we were to perform PCA, it's kind of funny to perform PCA on only two dimensions and only two features or variables, but Say, if we wanted to preserve the maximum amount of information, what would happen if we perform PCA is we would project the data on this kind of diagonal line over here, which we could kind of try to imagine how it would look like. And after we find this, this line, we project the data onto that line, like we see over here. And this is the PCA result. This is what we uh, want to achieve. We want to have our data projected onto a single new axis. And this axis actually has a name. The name of this axis is the eigenvector uh, of what's called the covariance matrix. So we'll have to understand these two definitions, but this is the objective of PCA. This is what we want to achieve at the end. Okay, let's talk about the mathematical aspect of uh, PCA. So we saw earlier, we want to have a smaller number of dimensions. We want to project, project the data onto what's called the eigenvectors, the imaginal uh, uh, axis that we, we saw earlier. And the way we do that is again, we, we, we calculate the covariance matrix. We'll have to understand in the next slides what the, what the covariance matrix is. And once we have that, we perform one of these two methods, either singular value decomposition, SVD, or eigen decomposition, where while they are two different methods, uh, they have some similarities. And in this specific case, they converge to the same solution. So if we call one of them or the other, it wouldn't matter. We would get the exact same uh, solution. We would get the same eigenvector. So to understand how to calculate the covariance matrix, let's again look at the variance uh, formula that we saw earlier. Variance is defined for a single variable, and covariance, like we see over here, is defined for two different variables, meaning for two different features in the data set, the covariance actually tells us how they behave together. And this is the formula that we see over here. It's xi minus the uh, mean of that column times yi minus the mean of that column divided by n minus 1. And of course, you sum everything together at the top. And if we plug in x and x, we would get the exact formula for variance. And another interesting aspect over here is that this is a symmetric formula. So if you switch X and Y, you would get the exact covariance. This only tells us the uh, formula for covariance. But before we move on to the covariance matrix, let's get a better intuition of how this looks like. If we have two different features, they could have a 
positive value, negative value, or a zero value for covariance. If they both increase, say you have an increase in one feature and an increase in another feature, that means that they have a positive covariance. If one increases and the other decreases, this is a negative covariance. And if nothing really happens, then the covariance is zero. And if this kind of reminds you of uh, correlation, then your intuition is correct because, well, the formula for covariance and correlation is very similar. The only difference is some form of uh, normalization, although this is less important for this video, so we will not cover that. Okay, moving forward with our mathematical formulation, suppose we have a data matrix A with N rows and M columns, where each row again is a different sample or a different patient, and each column is a different uh, feature or a different medical test. And if you want to calculate the covariance matrix uh, of our data matrix A, uh, the covariance matrix would look like this. For every index i, j, we have the covariance of feature i and feature j. So for index 1, 2, we have the covariance for the first and second features. And if you remember that if you plug in the same feature twice, then you get the variance. This is why we have the variance in the diag diagonal of the covariance matrix. And of course, I also uh, mentioned that the covariance is a symmetrical uh, calculation. So the covariance of Z1 and Z2 is equal to the covariance of Z2 and Z1, meaning that we have a square metric uh, of size M by M. And we also have a symmetric matrix. And this is actually the reasons why uh, both singular value decomposition and eigen decomposition converge to the same solution. And so moving forward, we want to calculate the covariance matrix like we saw in the previous slide. And let's see how we do this in linear algebra. The first thing we want to do is to subtract the mean of each column, which if you can, you re, if you remember the formula for uh, covariance or variance, then you have to subtract the mean. This is why we we do this operation. So we create this uh, matrix A bar, which is simply, again, re reducing the mean of each uh, column. And then to calculate the covariance matrix, the calculation is A bar transpose times A bar calculated by N minus one. Uh, this, again, this just summarizes and the mathematical operations are identical to what we saw in this slide. Please let me know in the comments below if you would like me to make another short video on giving an example of how this calculation actually comes into play. So just to sum up the mathematical part, we want the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. We calculate them by these two methods, either SVD, singular value decomposition, or eigen decomposition where again, in this video, we treat these two methods as uh, black boxes. And at the end, after we have these eigenvectors, we take the data matrix A and we project the data onto these eigenvectors. And this is actually the new representation of the data, where now our data is reduced because we only have the, well, I guess one, two, three, or whatever amount of eigenvectors we want, which is the new amount of features that we have. Let's move on to a Python code example. I'd just like to shortly stop and say that if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps me a lot and I really appreciate it. Okay, let's start by importing these uh, Python packages, sklearn, numpy, pandas, and matplotlib. And the first thing we'll want to do is to load the Iris dataset, which is a toy dataset for three different uh, types of Iris flowers. Let's just see how our data frame looks like. We load the data frame, and now we make this DF object where we have, for each one of the samples, uh, 
four different uh, types of uh, uh, septal length, width, and petal length and width. So these are our features, and this is the target. If we take a look at how many targets uh, we have in total, we can actually find out using df target unique. Then we get that we have three different types of uh, flowers. So we take the features out of the data frame and we compute the A bar matrix that we mentioned before uh, by subtracting the mean of each column. This is the syntax to do that. And now we get A bar, which is again, just the same data set, but the only thing we did is take the mean of each column and subtract it so we could calculate the covariance matrix. Next, we convert our A bar from pandas to uh, NumPy because it's easier to calculate. We need the N, if you recall the equation, and the calculation of the covariance matrix is the A bar transpose times A bar, all calculated by N minus one. And the output is of course the covariance matrix, which is a four by four symmetric matrix because we have four features. Next, again, for this video, we treat both eigen decomposition and SVD as different uh, uh, black boxes, but they, for our case, perform the exact same operation. What these two functions do is that they take the data matrix and the covariance matrix that we have just calculated, and it projects the data onto the first two eigenvectors. So we'll define these functions. And then we'll plug in to both of these functions, both the, um, the data and the covariance matrix. If we take a look at our new data, if before it was 150 by four, now we have reduced the number of dimensions and we have two dimensions. And if we plot the data, then this is what we get, the SVD projection for PCA and the eigen decomposition projection. And if you take a look, it, it looks very similar, but there is a difference. And this is because the eigenvectors can, depending on the uh, different methods you use, or if it, even different initializations, it could converge to the same solution up to plus and minus signs for the vectors. So this is why we get these differences often, but it shouldn't matter because what we care about is project the data onto a, a, a lower dimension. And uh, of course, uh, and, and now we have a, a way to visualize the data. So this is actually how you perform this in, in Python, but you really don't have to do all the things I did above. There are shortcuts. For example, if you only want the covariance matrix, you can simply take our A matrix and call inside pandas, there is a covariance matrix uh, function. You would get the exact same uh, numbers. And you really don't need the covariance matrix. You can simply call sklearns PCA, which does all of what I showed you above inside a fit transform function. It takes our, even, even the, the a, a matrix, not the A bar matrix, it takes that in as input. It fits the data, meaning it calculates the, um, the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues, and it projects the data using the transform uh, function onto the uh, new basis. And if we do this with sklearn, we get, well, a very similar representation of what we had um, above. I will upload this onto GitHub and provide the link on uh, the, the, the description of this video. And thank you very much for watching this video.